I could have had another dozen names on here, and I could have shown you what they'd up been up to too, but I've just taken these eight as an example of what these people, who we now know because of the very, very frequent emails between them on this subject, are very closely linked and are working with each other on this crookedness. I'm going to show you what each of these people individually has done to contribute to the bending, distorting, falsifying, suppressing, or destroying of scientific da data and the corruption of science itself. Let's begin then with Phil Jones. He is the professor of meteorology at the Climate Research U uh, Unit at the University of East Anglia. And what he said in an email to one of his colleagues, to Michael Mann, in fact, uh, you've seen what he did, he bent the hockey stick, which uh, Fred has just talked about. Mike, can you delete any emails you may have had with Keith, that's Keith Briffer, uh, to do with the fourth assessment report of the UN? And then he talks about encouraging other people to destroy the same data. Why is this a criminal offence? Because three weeks earlier, a scientist called David Holland had written a formal Freedom of Information request to the University of East Anglia for disclosure of the very data which is here being described as to be destroyed. And on the result of this email, on the back of this email, Fred Singer and I have put in a formal complaint to the Information Commissioner in the United Kingdom. We are expecting uh, Professor Jones to be investigated we are expecting him to be prosecuted, we are expecting him to be convicted, and we are expecting him to be heavily fined. Next crook, James Hansen. James Hansen, you saw Fred Singer saying he has made forecasts of a 20-foot sea level rise, 600 centimetres, same as Al Gore. In The Guardian, a few months ago, one of the stupidest newspapers on the planet, he said, no, no, sea level will rise by 75 metres. That's 246 feet. And this is what the Washington Monument would look like if that happened. Clearly, this is mere rodomontade. But then he's good at over-projection. Here is the graph which triggered the climate scare. This was what Hansen put in front of Congress on a day deliberately chosen by his friend and financial beneficiary, Al Gore, to be hot. It was a very hot summer, very hot day. This was the graph that Hansen produced saying that from 1988 onwards, there would be a huge surge in global temperatures caused by CO2 emissions. Here is what actually happened. As you will see, the graph was a considerable overprojection. The red line there is what has actually happened, and that is the most extreme of the five nas the national or global warming data sets the temperature data sets. This is the one that comes closest to Hansen's projection. All the others show even less than this. So that then was Hansen, but that's not all he's got up to. One of the things that Anthony Watts, who studies temperature stations and how temperatures are measured worldwide, uh, found out is that Hansen and his group at the Goddard Institute for Space Studies have been tampering with the raw data. Here is the data for Santa Rosa, New Mexico, which is where the National Oceanographic and atmospheric administration is based, and you will see that it has been cooling for a hundred years. Well, of course, what you have to do is to make adjustments to this data to allow for the urban heat island effect. And so what this will do, of course, is to make the cooling still steeper, won't it? Well, no, it won't, unfortunately. This is the adjusted data from NASA GIS. That's what it was, that's what it is now. Now, I thought this was interesting, so I asked Anthony Watts if he could do something else for me. I said, could you find out what happens to all 1,200 of the US temperature stations after it's been processed? And I want to know whether, after it, this is the processed data put together now for all of those temperature stations in the United States. And that's for 1999, when they'd processed it. I wanted to know, was Hansen increasing the rate at which he bent the temperature data? So this is what happened. And did you see that? I'll try and make them flick from one to the other. You'll see that in the 1930s, he has indeed massaged the data. Unfortunately, this won't display them simply, but there you are. You can just about see how it's been very subtly bent with the objective of trying to make it look as though there has been a greater rate of warming in the 20th century than there actually has. Precisely the same game 
that they've now been caught out playing in the University of East Anglia. The connection between them is very close. Hansen and his sidekick Gavin Schmidt, about whom I'll have more to say later, have been conspiring together with Jones and the people at East Anglia and with the paleoclimatologists at uh, the Penn State University to fabricate, falsify, tamper with and mess around with all the temperature records so that nothing that is now collected in the way of a terrestrial temperature record can be trusted by anyone. Then we come to Ben Santa, one of the nastiest people who comes through in these emails. He writes thoroughly unpleasant and venomous email. This is not a scientist at all, this is purely a politician of the nastiest kind. Now, in the 1995 UN report, as in 1990, the scientists concluded, and concluded repeatedly, that there was no basis in fact for finding that humankind had had, or was likely to have, any immediate effect on temperature whatsoever. It was said here on one occasion, here is another example of the same thing. When will an anthropogenic effect on climate be identified? It is not surprising the best answer to this question is we do not know. That was their conclusion in 1995. And when the bureaucrats saw that, they realised, as you saw in Fred's slide, that they'd be voting themselves out of a job if they published that report as it was. So they gave it to Ben Santa and said, rewrite it. And so he did, and this was the conclusion once he'd rewritten it. All five of the previous quotations were taken out, of which I showed you two, and this was re replaced instead. The body of evidence now points to a discernible human influence on global climate. So when anybody tells you that a thousand or two and a half thousand or four thousand scientists have all joined together to reach the UN's consensus, in fact, the supposed consensus on whether or not humankind is having any significant influence on the climate derives from just one bad, mad, bent scientist. Michael Mann. Well, you've seen the hockey stick graph. And what is interesting is that this was long in the plotting. In 2005, David Deming, a very good scientist, paleoclimatologist, specialising in the derivation of, of pre-instrumental temperatures by borehole readings from all around the world, he said that in 1995, just after he'd published a paper in Science, he was congratulated by Ken Overpeck, one of the leading IPCC uh, protagonists, who had said to him, we have to get rid of the medieval warm period. Not we have to think about it, we have to reevaluate it, we have to get rid of it. Because if it was warmer in the Middle Ages than today, if it was, then there's no basis for alarm about today's temperatures. They knew they had to get rid of it and they thought that David Deming was as corruptible as the rest of them, which he wasn't, and that's how we know th uh, this story today. Well, there's the medieval warm period as it was in the 1990 report, as Fred showed you, and in the 2001 report, suddenly the medieval warm period has gone. Here's how they did it. They gave 390 times as much weight to those proxy data sets from tree rings, stalactites, uh, lake sediments, whatever it was, uh, to those data sets that gave them a nice hockey stick shape showing an alarming increase in apparent uh, reconstruction of temperature for the 20th century than they did to those which didn't. But even that didn't give them a hockey stick shape, so they wrote an algorithm that would give you a hockey stick shape with a huge surge at the end of the record, even if you fed in random red noise, which I've done there at the bottom. Random red noise will still give you a hockey stick if you use Michael Mann's algorithm. But even that didn't work. So then what they did was they took away all the proxy data for various key data sets that actually applied to the medieval period and substituted, without saying that they had done so, estimates of their own. Estimates. They simply made up the numbers and put them in. And only then could they abolish the medieval warm period. You can see very faintly the grey line at the bottom there is their graph, but then two distinguished Canadian scientists caught them out, got their data, put it back in, and even using their own bent algorithm, the medieval warm period, which is the black line there, reappears. 